George. Travis. How many more points do you think I'll score than you in the 2023 to 2024 fantasy football season? Negative 20. Meh. Meh. Hey, do you want to watch some fantasy football friends? I thought you'd never ask. What's up, fantasy football friends? My name is Carter McCracken. My name is Max Lampkin. And today we're going to be giving you our top 12 tight ends for the 2023 NFL season and two extra bonus players from each of us that you can target if these guys are gone late in your draft. All right, so starting off with some big news. Um, out of Indianapolis, we got Jonathan Taylor granted permission to seek a trade, only given one week, though. Um, not sure if that's going to be worked out. Obviously, a thing to keep an eye on if you haven't drafted. If you have drafted, I would just stick with Taylor. Obviously, if he gets traded somewhere, uh, his value goes way up. But outside of that, I, I don't know how much we're going to see. Um, only given a week. So asking the first round uh, price tag for that also. So um, also in news, we have JSN, broken wrist, getting surgery. Um, looking at about a two to three week return, which is fast to me. But I don't think that affects uh, the value of the guys there much. You know, you got DK, Lockett, and JSN. I don't think that affects their value much. If anything, it just boosts the value for the week one plays of DK and Tyler Lockett. Um, so that's our news, guys. But jumping into our tight end rankings. So between the two of us, we got Travis Kelsey at number one. Yeah, so Travis Kelsey is our number one pick. I think he's probably your number one pick, too consensus number one guy going in the first round which is something we haven't seen in a while um last year going around the turn now he's going in the beginning of the first round so yeah we really like kelsey here last year led the league in tight end targets receptions yards and touchdowns um that speaks for itself travis kelsey is a guy that really stepped up once tyreek hill left the chiefs and we were having question marks as how they would recover that production and they found it in Travis Kels. So we're really excited about Kels this year and he's going to be our number one guy. Yeah. Um, I, a 580p kind of scares me personally. I wouldn't take him that early. I think that's a little overvalued. Um, he, I mean, he is just, you have him in your lineup, you know, you're going to dominate that position for the week. So obviously he's a plug and play, no question about it. Um, second in route participation at tight ends. Uh, I mean, you know, you covered it already. We know who the guy is. He's dominant as position number one, undoubtedly. Uh, so Travis Kelsey, number one, guys, definitely target him. Um, I like him. If, if you're in a position where you think you can stack him and Mahomes, I think that's great. We had that in our league last year, suffered from it, definitely. So I think that's a strategy to keep an eye out on if you like Kelsey. Uh, moving to number two, we got Mark Andrews for the Baltimore Ravens. What do you think about Andrews this year? So when we see a healthy Lamar and a healthy Andrews, that connection is one of the best in the NFL. He's Lamar's favorite target, and I don't think that changes even with the addition of a healthy Rashad Bateman and some of the other players they've added, Isaiah Likely being one of them as the backup. Um, Yeah, I I really like Mark Andrews here. Um, Led the tight ends in air yards per game, so he's getting those downfield targets that you like to see in a tight end and really any player. And yeah, as long as he's healthy, I really like Mark Andrews coming back off injury and he's someone that I think at number two is perfectly placed. Yeah. Um, I think, I think he is the number two, uh, 26 ADP. I think, I think that's fair. Maybe a little high. I have no issue with it really. Um, he's like you said, I think with a healthy offense in Baltimore, I think he's a guy that his usage is just undeniable and even with the additions of Odell, Zay Flowers, and Isaiah Likely to back up tight end there, um, I, I think I think Andrews is going to get used. We, he saw 113 targets last year, and he was fourth in or sorry third in yardage, and it was still considered a down year for him. So I think this is a guy that even improves off of that. We're looking. I would certainly project for a thousand yards. Yeah, um, I'd like to see that out of him, that. especially with a healthy Lamar. So I, I think Andrews is going to be a guy that dominates again this year. I think you can be confident with him in your lineup. Uh, easy number two pick for me. Yeah, um, this is a guy that can get touchdowns as well. All right. Not afraid of the end zone. So we Very really dynamic like player. Yeah. Number three, we got George Kittle. This is a guy I really like this year. Um, last year, over the last seven games, was the tight end one. 
ended the year with only 86 targets. I think we see an increase in that. Two touchdowns, second in touchdowns with 11 behind only Travis Kells, who had 12. Um, and yeah, coming back last year, he sort of eased into it a little bit, but we really saw down the stretch that he's a huge end zone threat. Yes. We do expect to maybe see not the same rate, but over the same amount of games, he might be able to reach that target again. Uh, definitely going to get more receptions over this year. We expect him to be another 1,000-yard guy. And, yeah, this is someone who also you can find him five yards down the field, and he gets 35. So Yeah, a um, yak monster. Dude. Yeah. We've seen it time and time again. Um, I'm looking at it second in snap share, so playing 91% of the snaps. So he doesn't – he has – Little to no competition at the tight end spot, especially uh, in terms of another receiving threat. Um, so, and then fifth in target separation, which is very impressive considering if he's getting that separation already and then adding on what he does with the ball in his hands at the tight end position, that's scary. Um, Kittle, I think, is a guy who, like you said, maybe the touchdowns come back, but I believe the, the yardage and the receptions come up. Only 60 receptions last year. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to think he can reach that 75 mark. Um, so he's a guy that I think even as good as he was last year, finishing third, I think, and we have him ranked there. I think he could definitely uh, push Andrews and maybe maybe we see another another uh, a different tight end one finish this year. Yeah, as we just said, tight end one over the last seven games. Absolutely amazing stuff out of George Kittle. It's something you love to see in a guy who's super cool and, you know, pretty down to earth. We like George Kittle here at three. Yep, at four, we got uh, TJ Hawkinson. So, I mean, after he came over to the Vikings, dude, he was an absolute beast. Um, just uh, receptions, yardage, red zone usage, it was all there. So, and he's, he's the number two guy in that offense. We know it's a high-flying offense. You're going to see a lot of volume there. Um, I'm confident with him being – him and Kittle, for me, are – pretty close. Um, I do give Kittle a slight advantage, but I think Hawkinson, I think he's going to get good usage. I think he's going to be obviously one of the premier tight ends. I would say after him is that next, is that, is that teardrop into our next guys. But I think, I mean, Hawkinson's a good, a good tight end. I remember him coming out of Iowa. He's just, he's got it all. Um, yards. At, he's, he's like George Kittle light almost, you know, yards yeah. after the catch, a uh, great, great route runner. So I, I like, I like Hawkinson there at four. Yeah, someone you like to see get that opportunity that he didn't get in Detroit uh, to really shine in an offense that's going to be great. If he was in Detroit now, I mean, he might, you know, I wouldn't be saying the same thing. I think Detroit's going to be great this year. But certainly that Vikings offense is established. It's going to be good. And second in targets, receptions, and yards last year behind only Travis Kells. So, yeah, we love Hawkinson here. I think that he's someone – at a 46 ADP that you could look at drafting. I know I'm thinking about him in the fourth round, him in. So, uh, yeah, I see no problem if you want to take him as right. someone that could be viable. He's definitely going to give you the advantage in a lot of games and certainly has that tight end one upside. Um, if things seem to fall for him, I see that he could end up doing that. Right. So, Hawkinson here at four is great for me. Yeah, um, one thing I'll add just to top it off is he was tied for third in end zone targets, and he was also a third in red zone targets. So he's a guy that's going to get the ball when it matters. That's what we like to see out of our tight ends. Um, moving to number five, we got Darren Waller. So Waller is a guy who obviously I think you're going to get a lot of different uh, picks out of him between when you go person to person just because of the injury history, the uncertainty last year. Um, but I like Waller. Training camp reports have been raving about him. We saw him in the preseason game he played. Um, I believe he had a 40% target share for the routes that he ran, which is just insane. Um, obviously, I don't know if that'll that's not going to translate to the to the regular season, but um, I think Waller's a guy who went healthy, just as dynamic as any uh, tight end. We saw him finish tight end three and two, I believe it was, in 2019 and 2020. So a guy that we're looking at for a bounce back year, uh, getting drafted at 54, so we're looking mid fifth, which I don't mind that price tag at all. Uh, I think I think Waller's a guy who could explode this year, uh, bouncing back. Yeah, Waller injured all last season. Good reports out of camp. I think you covered everything I wanted to say. Um, <laughs> no, that's that's absolutely fine. We've seen him be a top tier and tight end when he's healthy all season. So just look for that someone that if you can get him at that 
price tag 54 and you have some security in the running back and wide receiver position i don't see any reason that you couldn't think of that as a viable option um he's going to be kind of one of those last guys that's going to really give you the advantage given a good yes. season i think if he has a great season it's he's going to be heads and tails above this next guy um and then if he doesn't he still is in that tier with these yeah, next guys i mean you gotta think he's still gonna get he's he's basically gonna operate as the wide receiver one in the giants offense so yeah you gotta think he's still obviously primed for a tight end one finish granted he's healthy i don't i mean i don't see him moving anywhere below seven eight at the lowest mm -hmm. um one thing i would say about waller that you kind of pointed out is that if you already have two receivers two running backs and you're looking for a guy in the fifth round you don't really see the value in a receiver or running back um, Waller's a guy I think I would love to have if I were in that position. So Waller's a guy I would not be afraid to add to my uh, roster. Yeah, he's certainly also someone that if you find that you end up getting him, I'd look for Daniel Jones later in the draft right. and get that stack. I think that would be an amazing strategy. And it's going to give you a leg up in a lot of your matchups. Yep. Next, we have Dallas Goddard. And this is why I say that Waller's great season would be, you know, he would have that tier ending, but a bad season. I think he'd be in this zone with Dallas Goddard. Uh, 10 touchdowns last season from Goddard. Or no, sorry, tight end 10 last season. Three touchdowns, 90% snap share. We know that this Eagles defense offense loves to run the ball. So it takes away from, that, from some of that upside from Goddard, especially when you have targets like A.J. Brown in the, in the end zone and Devontae Smith down the field. So... Goddard here is going to be very solid. He's going to get you good production on a week-to-week -week basis, but someone with a little bit less upside than the Waller, Kittle, those types of guys. Right. Um, I think I think you said it perfectly. He's a guy that I think is we get to this tier of solid guys that aren't primed for absolute boom weeks um, or don't give you a super high floor. But I think Goddard is. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Ninety percent snap share, so he's going to be on the field. Um, only 68 targets last year, so hopefully we can see that get to the 80 range. Uh, we'd like to see, you know, he did miss five games, though. So the fact he still finished as a tight end one speaks to who he is. I think the talent's obviously there. Um, he's he's operating as the wide receiver three in that offense. So I, th I think he's, he's a guy where you can feel confident in playing him week to week, certainly. Um, but other than that, he's not going to give you a real explosion. But I mean, how do you how do you feel about his sixty overall ADP? I feel like yeah. So we just talked about Waller having a fifty four ADP yeah. and six picks behind him. I don't see the value in taking Goddard right. if you're not going to get your hands on Waller or someone above. At I think you wait for a while because you're going to see there's some people later on, ten fifteen picks behind that have that can certainly return just as much value as Goddard. Now, if you really, really want that consistency and you have a lot of solidity in your team, I don't think that he's undraftable, but some, certainly if you can't get your hands on Waller, I'd, cert, I would I try mean, to look past yeah. Goddard. So I think that moves us perfectly into our next guy uh, who we have at number seven overall, Pat Fryermuth. Fryermuth had great yardage totals, finishing sixth at 732 yards, um, 98 targets, so nearly broke 100 targets, which is very encouraging out of him. And I think a second year with Kenny Pickett should boost that. Um, hopefully his catch rate will go up uh, above 63 for 98, so you're looking at lower than you know two-thirds catch rate. But if he can exceed what he did last year and then we see some positive touchdown regression, he's primed for a, a, a solid year in my opinion. Yeah, I think he's – Prime for something that you look for at an ADP of 91 in a tight end. As we said, if he can up those touchdowns, I think he's going to be a great option for you guys. Some really great value later in the draft. Another thing to add on, 70% snap share. You would like to see that go up a little bit. No. We'll wait to see how that yeah, that's, changes. That's a little concerning considering they also drafted Darnell Washington in the third round. Yeah. Now, I don't know... I mean, you know, they see what they have in Fryermuth. I'm sure he, he's obviously the tight end one, but already not getting that snap share, like you said, that'll kind of be determined. But at, at 91, you're looking at mid to bottom of the eighth. You can't really be too concerned about that at that point. Yeah, this guy's had 849 air yards last season, 
fourth behind Andrews, Kelsey, and Hawkinson. Yeah, so he's so, right there with the elite guys. Yeah, he's up there statistically in some spots with those elite guys that can give you that upside. If you're getting those downfield targets, you can all, you're always poised for a big breakout touchdown, which can give you a great return that week as in the tight end position. Um, next, we got someone that gives me a headache personally. <laughs> Um, I don't know how you feel about him. His name is David Njoku yeah, I with the Cleveland Browns. Um, I mean, I think he's he's a guy where you're like, how does this not work? You know, because he's just a, he's a physical specimen. He's a beast with the ball in his hands. He seems to get open. He's like he's like a guy that's a wide receiver and a tight end's body, but still still is has a blocking ability. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, great all around tight end. But I think Njoku is a guy that we've always wanted. We want to see it. You know, we want to see it on the field. And he definitely showed us those boom weeks last year. He was a top waiver wire ad. Um, definitely won't be on the waivers this year for anyone. Finished eighth in yardage, uh, four touchdowns, 83% snap share, which is great. So, I mean, Najoku is a guy who is definitely encouraging. Does seem to get injured every year. Obviously, guys, we don't project for injury. Um, but Najoku... He's getting drafted before Firemuth, nine spots before him. So you're looking at the you know bottom of the seventh. Um, I don't mind it. I just I do think that offense should be a little bit better with a full year with Watson. So I think the potential, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the potential is there for a better season than what we saw last year. Even though he did finish as tight end eleven, but um, yeah, I think the Joku. I would be comfortable with him in my lineup. Maybe not at that ADP though. Right. Yeah. As we just said, a little bit lower ADP or higher ADP. Sorry, lower ADP than some of these guys we have ranked even higher. So, yeah. Um, and Joku, I think that this is a better offense this year, which gives me some hope. Uh, four touchdowns last season. That could certainly increase right. if Deshaun Watson really starts to get in the flow. I think, you know, this offense could be good. Uh, Mari Cooper, obviously, is going to be the first target there, but. And Joku could certainly vie for the pseudo wide receiver two there with Elijah Moore. I don't mind it if you need to draft him, if you feel like he's this year is going to be his year to really show what we've all thought he could be. Um, yeah, that's all I really got to say about Njoku. He is someone that will get you high and then get you low. So um, um, definitely do that at your own risk. One thing I'll add is, Stat, a nice stat I'm looking at right now, 47.1 uh, contested catch rate, which is ninth right above Travis Kelsey, right below Hunter Henry. Um, so a guy that I feel like he fills all aspects of a tight end. You know, he gets open, great run after the catch, obviously great in traffic. So a guy that offers you high upside, um, the floor is a little questionable, though. So right. um, that's all we got for Najoku. Moving on, our number nine guy, Evan Ingram. Uh Finally kind of put it together last year. Uh, first year in Jacksonville, got that big extension this offseason, so that's a good thing. They obviously have him in their in their plans. Um, I just – so it's – with Ridley coming in, you question how much of that target share can he keep up. Um, I mean, what, what do you – what's your outlook on him? Yeah, so as you said, Ridley coming in definitely takes targets away from him. As well, I guess on the contrary – they will be a better offense, right, open so things up. it will open things up a little bit. Uh, tight end won over the last five games, so I certainly don't see them seeing that production out of him than taking him out of the game plan because Calvin Ridley's there, you know? Right. He's going to definitely get some production. Trevor Lawrence likes to spread the ball, so yes. I don't think you have to worry too much about his receptions and targets going down. Maybe a little bit of uh, negative regression, but nothing too serious. I really like Evan Ingram, especially at the 77 ADP you can get him at. This is, you know, 17 spots behind Dallas Goddard, and I think that their upside are very similar. So Evan Ingram's a guy I'm going to look for later in my drafts if I'm struggling in the tight end position at that point. Yeah, I think he's going to be great for some people, and I know certainly (laughs) uh, one of our buddies had him. He called him tight end one during the last stretch (laughs) and during the playoffs because he really came up big, and if he could – do that consistently we're going to be looking back and ranking him a little bit higher next year all right i'll take this next guy because i know you have uh no desire to talk about him yeah um someone that has let down a lot of guys especially last year um i think his adp was third round 
Uh, so, yes, we are talking about Kyle Pitts. Sorry to all the heartbroken Kyle Pitts owners from last year. 31st um, tight end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so finishing as a, a, a tight end three, if you know you want to label it as that, um, which is just amazing because I feel like the talent's there, but I don't know. A guy who at the 58 ADP, you're looking at a bottom fifth round pick, a guy that I'm not taking a gamble on because – there's other value there. There's even other tight ends there. Like, I'd much rather have Dallas Goddard or Darren Waller in that range. Um, Pitts just kind of scares me with the uncertainty. Now, it's almost like he obviously has to – got to see positive regression in there. It's, it's got to happen. Um, I just I just think it's – it's there's so – there's that Atlanta offense is so run heavy, but him and Drake London are the only two top targets in there. So, it's hard for me to not see him – you know, getting at least at least a top a tight end one finish, you would think. It's just hard for me not to imagine that. Okay, so I'm uh, gonna list a chart. couple of people around Kyle Pitts and I want me I want you to tell me who you'd rather have. James Conner. yeah, I'd take James Conner. James Conner. Rashad take, White. Yes. You know I'm a Rashad White guy. Chris Godwin. Yes. Darren Waller. Obviously. <laughs> Christian Kirk. Yeah, uh, you know I love Christian Kirk. Dallas Goddard. Yes. Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> yes. James Cook. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, Kyle Pitts to me is just not a guy at that 80. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just not going to. I mean, clearly, guys, you just heard it. I, I said I said I'd take all those guys over Kyle Pitts. Um, I just, I don't see myself having any shares of him. I don't have real interest in, you know, Poking the stick at him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you're really just hoping for something that we've never seen out of him. With the addition of B. John Robinson, I don't think that their running game decreases at all. Right. I think more targets move away from Kyle Pitts. And I think Drake London takes a step up this year. So uh, I really some London this yeah, year. I really don't think that there's much to look at that's encouraging, encouraging yeah. or even – I'll, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Tight, tight end 31 last year. I think it's – ridiculous how high he is in some ratings he's not on my ratings <laughs> but um yeah i'm not gonna deny the talent i see why people like kyle pitts obviously he's amazing physically he's got the skills he's just not in the right situation to thrive we haven't seen it in the past year and a half and uh yeah so kyle pitts for me is a no-go but here we have him at 10, so... All right, and Consensus has him at 7, which is scary. But um, anyways, guys, moving on to number 11, a guy who could be going slightly underlooked, undervalued. Um, I had him I have him ranked at the same spot. Uh, Dalton Schultz for the Houston Texans now, so moved to the other Texas team. Um, a guy who performed very well in the red zone last year. We saw when Dak came back, he was, one of, he was Dak's you know, number two target, go-to guy. Um, so that was very encouraging. Obviously, the situation in Texas or in Houston is a little a little more murky. Um, but a rookie quarterback always likes a tight end. So that's that's something I would look for. And his price tag is 113. So we're looking at a, around 10 ADP. I have no issue with taking Schultz. And I'm comfortable with, I think, his floor. I think he's going to be comfortable with Stroud. I think, I think Schultz is a guy who has good metrics. He's going to get playing time. He's going to run routes. He's going to get targets. So I have no issue with Schultz. I think he's great value. If you're someone that waits on tight ends late in your draft, that's a guy I would have my eye on for sure. Yeah, 10th overall last year. I think he can definitely improve on that. That Houston situation is a little bit murky, and we know Schultz is a guy that's secure. Right. So we see him being a security blanket for Stroud, and that's going to play really well into his fantasy value. Next, we have... Cole Komet, and this rounds off our top 12. Obviously, we still got these two from each of us that we want you to also take a look at. But yeah, Cole Komet is someone that kind of showed that he could be a viable fantasy option last year. Tight end eight. Yep. Um, I had him the first three weeks of the season. Laid me some stinkers, some absolute goose eggs, Cole Komet. Um, but I may be drafting you again this year, so you have you have a chance to redeem yourself. But um, 
123 ADP, 11th round ADP. Uh, he was actually number one in snap share, believe it or not. So he has no – well, they did sign Robert Tanyan, who – I think I think we'll get his own burn. He's we've seen him before put up some good numbers, but I think Cole Komet they gave him the big extension. Um, I think his numbers go up. He only had 50 receptions last year. I think that goes up. We're expecting a breakout from Justin Fields, so I think that's you know that correlates to Komet. Um, he's a guy I will certainly be looking for late in my rounds, especially if I draft uh, Justin Fields. So I like Komet this year. I think he could exceed. In our rankings, I could see him up around eight or nine um, to finish the season. Obviously, he was tied in eight last year, so could come up from that or right around that. So Cole Komet is someone I will certainly be targeting in my draft. I'm a guy who personally likes to wait on tight end. Um, but yeah, guys, Cole Komet rounds out our top 12 consensus. Um, one draft tip I want to give for you guys, um, especially the newer people playing fantasy, because I know I made this mistake. Um, don't feel like you have to fill out your roster, you know, run, two running backs, two receivers, a quarterback, and a tight end. You don't have to get those covered first. You can always wait on a tight end. Um, you're going to play yourself into some bad value picks if you do operate like that. So just keep that in mind when you're drafting. Running backs and receivers are always the ultimate value picks. Um, but, yeah, so you want to start us off with your two extras? Yeah, I would love to because I'm super confident in these guys. And I know you had one, one of them year. I had last year. and. Yep. Um, when I had him and Brees back to back go down, I knew my fantasy hopes of winning the championship were over, uh, as well as having Mike Evans drafted at my two spot, it would kind of all fell apart really quickly. But yeah, this is a guy super consistent, 11.6 fantasy points per game last year in PPR the formats, Zach Ertz, um, tight end one in each of the first six games. So he's giving you high outputs on a week to week basis. You can't ask for anything else in the tight end position. It is such an inconsistent position where you just right. pray for a touchdown. I think Zach Ertz can really service as a set and forget type of guy for you. He certainly was for me last year. I have, have him at seven in my personal rankings. I am a little bit biased, but I loved having him on my team last year. Obviously, coming back from injury, there's questions with his age. But we've seen throughout his career, when he's healthy, he's a great tight end to have. High production on the Eagles and now with Arizona. I think that he could see similar opportunity. My second guy is Tyler Higby, and I am all over the Rams offense this year. So, I know their two big pieces are coming back from injury, so there are question marks. But when they were healthy, they were Super Bowl champions. Yes, a lot of that was their defense, but we saw great fantasy outputs from that whole team that year. And I think that Tyler Higby is someone that will benefit from that offense coming back to form 108 targets last season fifth in receptions i think those targets go down but he probably stays somewhere between 70 to 80 targets fifth in receptions he's a guy that is secure you know good catch rate tight end six high great snap share. high snap share yep. and adp of 137 so you're looking at him as a tight end two for some people but if you want to wait and then go for him a little bit higher than 137. I love that option as well. Tyler Higby rounds off my tight ends for this episode. But um, if you can wait and get some great value picks later in the draft, people like Charbonnet, Bigsby, um, Rashad Bateman even, you know, Singletary Dobbs. could be good. Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs then these are guys that I'm looking to after that. And I think they provide you a lot of flexibility, have, being able to wait on the tight end position and still have set and forget type of guys. If you don't get one of these guys, you're probably going to be on the waiver wire week to week, provided you don't get anyone else we listed today. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's a good point. Because I think after, I would say even after Kyle Pitts or including him in that, you know, it gets really everything gets kind of smushed together in that tight end section. So yep. there's not much difference. Um, it's just all about hitting on the right guys. Um, but I would say with Tyler Higby, the only thing I'll add is he was tight end six last year. So um, a guy who's obviously being undervalued based on his finish last year. Um, so I think that's a great pick from you. I'll start us off with Sam Laporta, the rookie out of Iowa for Detroit. Um, I really like Laporta, second round pick. Um, he, ha he has a great profile athletic wise. 
Uh, great run after the catch. George Kittle esque. Both came out of Iowa, so I think he's going to fill in as that number two receiver for the Lions, and we're expecting a not necessarily a breakout because I think we saw the breakout last year in that offense. I think we're just seeing that sustain carry over this year. And Jameson Williams, guys, is out the first six weeks due to his suspension. So I think I think Sam Laporta fills in that role as the number two because I mean otherwise it's kind of up in the air. They have Amon Ra. Um, signed Marvin Jones, who's like 50 years old. But um, besides that, Sam Laporta, guys, I think I know rookie tight ends historically do not do well. Um, I'm not saying he's going to finish as the tight end five or anything, but I think he's a guy you can plug in your lineup, and I think you will be happy about that. Um, Laporta's ADP is very low at 165, guys. So you're looking at um, no one else is going to be looking at him. I'll put it to you like that. So a sleeper pick, if you want to call him that, but I think Laporta is going to be a great return on value. Um, next guy to round us off for the night, Chigo Conquo for Tennessee. Um, we saw him really pop off last year once he started getting used. Um, a great metrics guy. He, um, I think with Tannehill back, we've seen Tannehill support tight ends, whether it be Delaney Walker, um, Jonu Smith, or even Austin Hooper last year for a, a certain period of time. So I think Oconquo, if he if he's used last if he's used this year like he was at the end of last year, I think he's a guy that is a steal. I personally have him as my number twelve. Um, drafted one forty three this year, so I think he's a guy that is on the on the up. And in terms of age, the offense he's on, I think that offense should be better. I mean, he was playing with Malik Willis and Josh Dobbs for some weeks there. But um, I think I think Chig is a guy that you can take even as your tight end one, and I think he'd be a great pick if you're a guy that likes to roster two tight ends. So um, that rounds us off for the night with tight ends, short and sweet. Um, just you know, guys, play your board. We say this with every position, but know your value, know where you can get these guys, know the rosters of the guys that are picking around you. If someone, if the guys two, three, four picks around you all have tight ends then you don't need to press on a tight end. The, the guy's not going to take him. So you can wait a few more rounds, get your value at receiver and running back, and then go tight end. Get one of the guys we have ranked a, a little lower on these lists. Um, but, yeah, guys, so thank you, and that is our tight end rankings. Yeah, uh, I also just wanted to add one more thing, not to <laughs> cut off your outro, but you're looking for touchdowns if you're going to be wavering some guys so if you see some touchdown upside definitely grab that guy keep him on your team it's going to be tempting to drop him but you know on a week-to-week basis tight end can be very volatile so absolutely definitely roster want these guys that we just told you to and if you can't then just look for that touchdown upside because that's Jawan that's Johnson. You're gonna want. <laughs> Jawan Johnson and Taysom Hill even like oh, gosh. Yep. somehow that's enough for tonight yeah <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you later.